What's up guys, today we're going to be doing a quick tip on how to do some cool gradients using Adobe Illustrator like these examples in front of us. They all have a calming and exciting blend of different colors together with different treatments of how that gradient is formed. Gradients are a cool way to make your artwork stand out, bring a new fresh look to the design, and take you out of your comfort zone to explore new and exciting ways to make your artwork change. So we're going to be going over three of the ways to create gradients out of the infinite possibilities. I find these the most straightforward and easy to learn quickly. The first one is linear gradient which is seen a lot and used more often. And you can control it to go horizontal, vertical, or any direction. The second is radial gradient, which is very similar to linear, but in circle form. And it's very trippy and beautiful. And there's little tricks that you can use to make it look different from one another. And lastly is a mesh gradient or mesh tool on Adobe Illustrator. And it's more customized and free flowing. A lot of the times you see this effect used in more kind of abstract shape landscapes and sceneries. And you can also use this tool to make flat shapes look more three dimensional. So those are the three. And if there's a specific gradient you're looking for I left a timestamp down in the description below with that all being said let's get to it okay guys so we're gonna open up illustrator and we're gonna set the dimensions to a thousand a thousand just a square shape form and we're gonna do five artboards the raster effect we're gonna set it to 150 and we're gonna click create so now that we have it open we're just gonna organize it to two rows two columns and we're gonna space it out a bit more just to give it some breathing room we're gonna draw a black box just so the artwork will pop out when we create the shapes and gradients. We're gonna copy that black square shape, Command C, and we're gonna press that other artboard box to duplicate. So we're going to work on the linear first. So let's draw a square shape. So there's a couple of ways to activate the linear gradient. On the top left in the color bar, if you press that small arrow on the bottom, it gives you all these different color options. And towards the middle, you see these gradient outlines. And the first three are linear gradients in different colors. You have a black and white, you have a blue and a pink. We could select that and it'll activate the linear gradient. And another way to activate the gradient is the toolbar. On top of the eyedropper icon, there's a linear gradient icon that you could press as well. So we're gonna click on that gradient icon and just press the shape we want it to form into. And as you can see, it automatically gives you that gradient look, which is super straightforward. So what we want to do to customize and add some colors to the gradient is on the right hand corner There's a gradient panel which we could press We could drag that panel out by itself and extend it for a better viewing experience And as you can see there's some different functions that we could use and for the angle Let's make it go up and down versus left to right So we're just gonna go negative 90 so that the white is on top and the blacks on bottom and to change the color for the white area We're gonna double click that white circle and it'll take you to this color palette. And we're gonna just set that to RGB and start playing with different color formats. And let's set the black one to another color as well. And if you wanna add another color in the middle, all you need to do is press the middle area and it'll give you another circle where you could click on and change the colors. And what's fun about these colors are you could drag it to your liking and exaggerate the position so that each color doesn't have to be even and exact. So this gives it a more stylized look to whatever liking you want. So as you can see, if I drag towards the left, it has more of that mix between the white and blue. And if I drag it more to the right, it has a more mixture between the pink and white. So it's really fun and very customizable and you can really have fun with these colors. So after we have that linear tool locked in, let's make a couple of different ones just to see how much we could change it up and see the different angles and personalities to just the linear tool itself. So what we wanna do to duplicate the shape is hold shift command and drag and that gives you the other shape. And then we're just gonna hold shift command those two and drop it down so we have four different options that we get customized. And for the next one, let's give it a 45 degree angle and let's play with some more exaggerated and deeper, darker colors. So as you can see, I'm exaggerating the colors and trying to make it feel as different as possible. That black really gives it a interesting feel. Let's make that purple. And yeah, that looks completely different, super trippy. And the next one, we're gonna really squish each color palette to see how that looks and how confined and far we could take it. So let's push all of them towards the left-hand side. And yeah, that's looking really cool. It has a really psychedelic sunset vibe to it. And lastly, let's play with that little diamond shape in between the colors. So as you can see, if when I drag it towards the left, it really pushes that balance of the pink and white that gives it a whole different feel and a whole different 
way of smoothing and transitioning. So let's do that to the blue and also the orange. And let's make the whole composition vertical. So we're gonna set the angle to zero. So those are four different styles that we did just for the linear tool. A lot of different ways and possibilities. And another really cool thing for linear tool is that it could blend in really well with photos. For example, if you have a really nice photo that you wanna add color to it, you could make the linear gradient transparent. So what we wanna do is drag an image and let's say we want to make the left hand side a color and make it fade towards the lady in the middle so what we want to do is draw that rectangle and press the linear tool and let's change that light blue to a yellow and that dark blue into white and what we want to do is click on the white dot and you see on the bottom next to a location there's opacity let's set that to zero and as you can see it slowly fades and totally disappears from yellow to transparent. And let's just change that yellow to a more pink color. And we could drag that diamond shape so that there is more image and the color is more condensed towards the left hand side. And we could add a yellow color to change it up and add more style to it. And that was a quick way to do a transparent linear gradient on top of an image. Next up is radial gradients. And what we wanna do is just copy that linear gradient that we did above and copy it to the next composition and it'll automatically just duplicate onto the next surface. So what we wanna do is click on the radial panel and there's gonna be three different icons. The middle one is radial gradient, so we're gonna press on that. And as you can see, it automatically turns it into a radial gradient. And same exact formatting as linear. There's gonna be those color toggles that you could change the colors in between. It, when I'm playing with it, it really changes the way the radial looks. And let's play with the colors and add some trippiness to it. Also what's cool about this radial gradient is it looks really cool as a circle too. So how we're gonna make that square circle is what we wanna do is click on select the square and on the corners there's a little circle that we could drag and it automatically turns it into a circle. So again, let's play with the radial gradient and add an image to it. And a nice image for the radial gradient effect is a centerpiece. For example, if there's a character in the middle, it really highlights that character itself. So there's a really rad photo of Mac DeMarco that I think will be a nice fit for this radial gradient of him like rowing a boat with this nice sunset background. And what we're going to do is duplicate the radial gradient and size it to the image itself. It's okay if it's stretched out. I think there's a really cool look to that. And for this radial gradient, what we want to do is make the center transparent and the outside color solid. So as you can see, yellow is what we want to keep. So for the light blue, we want to click on that and set it to zero. Let's make the pink a lower opacity and also the white as well. And another cool thing about radial gradient is it has this really interesting blended layering system to it. So as you can see, when I drag it out, it shows more of that character in the center with that nice oval around Mac DeMarco. And we can add some interesting colors to it to really bring it out and make it feel fun and fresh. And now that we have a color to our liking, let's add some type to it just for fun. So we're gonna type in Mac DeMarco, let's change the font and let's play with the tracking and kerning. Let's set that up on top. On the bottom, let's type in Chambers of Reflections for one of his songs. Let's put some cool script font on the bottom to just make it different from the top. Let's change that of to a serif, you know, just because it's Mac DeMarco. It's a little random and kind of goofy. And that script font on the bottom is looking really cool. Let's apply that to just Mac itself as well. So let's highlight that. And let's change that to the script font. And let's also add in Salad Days for his album title as well on the bottom. And yeah, that was a radial gradient and also a radial gradient used on the image. Hope you dig this one. Lastly, we're gonna work on Mesh Tool. Mesh Tool is a little bit more complicated and has more layers to it versus linear and radial. So for Mesh Tool, on the left toolbar, there's a little icon on top of the gradient and what we want to do is select that square and add in angles of where you want that radial gradient to form. So we're going to set one on the top left and bottom right. And as you can see, when you select one little corner, you could double click what color you want and it will just activate that color zone. And we're going to just select that little top left corner 
and select orange and as you can see it only applied that color to that top left so let's select all of the compositions and make it into yellow and let's start playing and plucking some cool colors in and out of it and you can also click multiple also when you hold shift and press another dot it will apply that same color to those two as well After we have a color palette to our liking, what's cool about Radio Gradient is similar to the warp tool on Photoshop, you could select and drag each of the points to different locations so it gives a more wave format and look to it. So as you can see, I'm moving that yellow blur up on top and that yellow blur on the left towards the bottom so it gives a more zigzag shape to it. And for the mesh tool, you can honestly work on it forever and just tweak it all day. So definitely play around with it to your liking. All right, now that that's to a place that we like, let's work on trying to make a shape into a dimensional form. So let's drag in a circle and let's try to make the sphere feel more 3D. What we wanna do is click on the mesh tool and select areas of where we want the sphere to apply the shading to. So similar to the square, we're gonna select the top left and bottom right. And let's select the left hand side and apply a darker blue to it. So as you can see, the shading is there. So what we wanna do is make the bottom left dark and the top right bright so the lighting is from the top right and we're going to add some colors and shading around it to our liking all right now that that's feeling pretty good let's stretch and play with the warping of the little dots just so it feels more dimensional and the lighting is hitting the overall sphere let's tweak it a bit more and give it some more color let's make the bottom red so that there's another lighting source and gives it a bit more warmth to it let's make that bottom left a little dark so that it'll pop out more in terms of the 3d and yeah that's the 3d sphere we did that really quickly and definitely take your time and explore different ways to do this cool mesh tool so those are the different ways to create gradients on Adobe Illustrator to suit whatever design you're trying to do. Hope you found this quick tip helpful and that you make some trippy and beautiful gradients afterwards. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Thanks again and see y'all soon. Peace.